Howdy all, Ryan here with PlayBetterBanjo.com. Got another question for you. This one came in this week from John, and he was wondering, how do I figure out, if I'm not in my home tuning, how do I figure out where the chords are? And beyond that, once I know the chords, say, in the open position, how do I figure out where they are up the neck? So that's a really big question. There's a lot to unpack there. And there's a lot of foundational knowledge that you'd really need to know to figure that out on your own. But I'm going to walk you through that right now. And actually, I'm going to kind of jog you through that because, like I said, this is a lot of information. It might take you a long time to assimilate all this and internalize it. But let's see if you can gain some insight here by going through the process with me right now. We're going to do our example today in the open D tuning. So most of us are probably familiar with the home tuning of open G as a standard base of operations. Uh, but in order to explore this question, we'll go to a less familiar tuning. So we're going to open D tuning. This is how I do the open D tuning. I tune my fifth string to an F sharp, my short string. Then the rest to a D on the fourth, F sharp on the third, A on the fifth, and D on the first. All right, so here we are in this new tuning. How do we figure out chords in this new tuning? Well, one kind of obvious way is you can get online and maybe search around and see if you can find some, some guidance there, some chord charts or whatnot, and that's all well and good. But where is that information coming from? And if you want to develop and uh, construct your own chords and you want to find them up and down the neck, how can, how can you do that? It just takes some basic music theory, quite a bit of basic music theory, but let's get started. Of course, in all of your useful music theory the way I've learned it and the way I teach it is to always go back to our our kind of our Rosetta Stone of music theory information and that's the major scale and how it's constructed uh, in an abstract manner anyhow so let's do that uh, I'll pull up this fretboard diagram but uh, for now let's just kind of zoom in and use some of the blank space here so the first thing you need to know are all the notes of your, your D major scale right now. And uh, that's going to get us uh, established. It's going to give us a little reference to the uh, character and nature of an open D tuning. It's also going to give us all the notes that we need to know all the notes that go into a D chord. So let's, uh, let's assume we're looking for D, G, and A chords in the key of D, which would be your most common chords. We'll start with D. So you may or may not be familiar with this process. What I'm doing here is I'm writing out the eight degrees of a major scale and in this case it's going to be a D major scale. So our first note is going to be a D. Likewise our eighth note is where we come back home and complete the cycle to another D note. The intervals in between each degree of the scale will be, I'm writing them in half steps, two, two, one, two, 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 one. If I follow that pattern through the musical alphabet, for instance, I go from the first degree, which is a D, to the second, and I go up two half steps up the musical alphabet, that's an E. If I go up two more half steps, that's an F sharp. One more between the third and fourth degree of a scale gives us a G, and so on. That's this is not the intent of this lesson to show you how to do a major to teach you how to do a major scale on paper, but I am demonstrating it for you. Hopefully, it's something you've already touched on. Otherwise, that's something you can go figure out. Um, so once you have all the notes of a particular major scale, in this case a D major scale, you can then figure out the notes of your chords because there's a formula for each chord. Major chords, what we're normally dealing with, in order to figure out the notes of a major chord, you find its parent scale. In this case, we're looking for the D major chord and the notes therein. So we find a D major scale. Then we just take a look at the one, three, and the five of that particular scale and we see that we have a D, an F sharp, and an A. 
So now what we know is any time we can sound in any manner a D, an F sharp, and an A note at the same time, we will be achieving the harmony that is known as a D major uh, chord. That is why this tuning, the open D tuning, is called as much. It's because if you look at the strings, the way I've tuned them, and you hopefully are tuned as well, you notice that the only notes we've tuned any of the open strings to are F sharps, Ds, and A's. Therefore, when we strum our open strings, we have a D chord. All right. So, knowing that D, F sharp, and A make a D chord, we know that we can strum openly, and that gives us a D chord. Where else can we find uh, combinations of Ds, F sharps, and A's up and down the neck? Well, the first thing you got to do now that you're in a, a new tuning that might not be as familiar to you is you got to map out the fretboard and figure out uh, where your notes are. What I do if I'm actually writing this down, like I'm doing for you right now, is I usually just stick to the natural notes. So I'm not writing in any of the sharps and flats. Those are understood to exist between the natural notes. This is a little cleaner way to visualize the notes of a fretboard, but if it suits you, depending on where you are with all this, you may want to actually write these out and include the sharps and flats when you write it out this way. This is a great exercise to do over and over. You just get better and better at doing this and then you can start visualizing this stuff internally, mentally, and a lot of times you won't even have to write this down after enough practice. Um, but for now I'm just doing a little detective work and now I can start looking around and seeing uh, let's see, let's get a little different color going here. Now let me see if I can find some D's, some A's, um, some F sharps. Those will be above our F, right? Below our G. Uh, let's see, we got some there, there. If you want, you can just do something like this and just go up and down your fretboard and just find D's, F sharps, A's, and that's going to show you where your various notes are that can make up uh, D major chords. You know, now all I have to do is combine three those three notes at once in any fashion, and I have a D major chord. So we know the open, if we strum the open, we know that would be a D major chord. But what about, let's find some other spots. It looks like here, this looks like a nice doable chord shape here. So, you know, if I translate that more cleanly down here without all the excess information, we get that. So seventh fret. As you can see right there, I can play that. Like so. And there's another D chord. So I have open. Or now I just learned through that process. I could do something like that. Another thing to consider here is we're looking down at the, the lower fretboard here. Well, actually, we're, we're looking at both. Um, that's a little bit difficult to fret, what I was just doing. There's uh, quite a bit of left-hand effort involved, so at times you might not want to do as much. But one thing to remember in any open tuning is that any of your open strings are a note of the home chord, right? So. Technically, I could open up, I could do this shape, and maybe I can get rid of the two, uh, the bar chord I'm using to fret those two outside strings on the seventh fret, and maybe I could just play the first and fourth open, because those are D notes now, which still make up part of a D chord. So you can get creative with the stuff. Maybe I would just play uh, these three here and leave the first string open. So you see at first I had this bar chord. And I thought, well, I can just open those outside strings up and just play these two guys. But I could also just play these three. Maybe these three. 
a lot of options there. You can have some fun with that. Uh, but what about your other chords that we're after? Um, what about our G chord and our A chord? You would just do the same process. So I won't dwell too long on this, but I will kind of remind you where we were with all this stuff. So let's say we're going to do it again. We would draw out our major scale this time. If we wanted to figure out the notes of a G chord, we'd draw out our major scale uh, for a G major, figure out the notes that make up a G major scale. G for our first one, then we're going to go two half steps up to an A, two half steps up to a B, one up to a C, two up to a D, E, two up to an F sharp, and then one to bring it home back to the G. Again, we're not really looking at how to build a major scale here. There are, uh, there's other information out there you can check out. At playbetterbanjo.com will teach you how to do that if you don't already know how. Okay, so now I have the info I need to pick out the uh, notes that make up a G major chord. I take the one, the three, and the five notes from my G major scale. That's a G, B, and D. That's why when we tune to the open G tuning, we're tuning to all G's, B's, and D's. But right now we're in the open D tuning. So where are we going to find our, our uh, G's, B's, and D's in this tuning. Let's see if I can get rid of our previous information here and then get us back, basically back in action. Okay, so now let's look and see where our G's, B's, and D's are. We do have some open strings involved, a few of them anyhow. There's a G and a B. This shape should look familiar to you. Uh, we just found this up the neck when we found an alternate D chord, didn't we? That little shape right there. Uh, so that's interesting, and that those are little uh, recurring patterns you want to keep an eye out for. So again, B's, G's, you would just go through this process. Good way to do it is just find them all at first. You're always going to find a bar in these open tunings that'll work for you. Uh, here's some more G's, B's, and D's. Just hunt them down and that looks pretty good. Another thing to notice if you're not already aware of this, when you get to the 12th fret, everything repeats pattern-wise. So once again, we have that same shape and that same exact shape that we just used in the previous uh, D chord up the neck example as well. Uh, so it's very, very interesting and important stuff to pay attention to. Uh, let's see, get that guy back. So I'll put us back where we were. Uh, where else can we find some interesting G chords? Like I said, we have this right here. We have this right here. This is a repeat of some earlier shapes. This one's kind of interesting. It's a little uh, parallelogram shape. So we could translate that to our blank fretboard down here. And uh, that'll get us a little reoriented as to what we can do with some of this information. So that's really it. That's the uh, process. You would do the same if you wanted to know your A chord uh, information up and down the neck in this particular tuning or any tuning. You would go through the A major scale process of figuring out the notes there. And then you would find the one, three, and five notes. Then you'd find them up and down the fretboard and whatever tuning you're in. And you kind of make note of the shapes that you're dealing with and go from there. So not all of the information you get when you do this is going to be immediately applicable in a really useful way, but that's also part of the learning process. So now we have three chord shapes here. So you look at that first one up at the top of the neck. So as you see there, we could just play a little shape like that. The other thing we had up the, on that fretboard there in the, the next shape up the neck was just a bar chord on the fifth fret. So that's becomes our four chord, our G chord in this case. Uh, further up the neck, we have this little, uh, maybe not as practical of a chord shape, but we could always alter it as we did on the D chord there. We have our B, D, G. And then we can get all the way up to the 12th fret and kind of
kind of repeat our initial open G chord shape with a bar over it. All right, so that's a little bit more time than I plan on spending with you on this, but as you see, that's a lot of information. And hopefully, if any of that is vaguely familiar to you, hopefully we made some connections and uh, put a few ideas together with connected a few ideas with some red thread there. Go through this process on your own and pretty soon you'll get more and more adept at being able to navigate your way through various tunings, find the information you need, find the chords, scales, all that stuff. And it'll really open up your playing both in just your understanding and in your ability to execute and express yourself more freely. We explore all this stuff in much more detail at playbetterbanjo.com in our lessons and courses and our weekly live sessions. So come visit us there if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next vid.